Good afternoon, folks, um, um, and welcome to our February branch event with Andy Milne of the Better Health Generation. Before I hand over to Andy, I just wanted to take a couple of moments to let you know about some upcoming events. Um, for our branch events on the 24th of March, we welcome Barry Johnson, who's the People Director of Caledonia Housing, and they won last year's CIPD Scotland sponsored Cherry's uh, Terrific Team of the Year. Uh, that's a lunchtime session with Barry. Uh, and he's going to tell us what they did within Caledonia Housing to achieve this award. And then on the 22nd of April, we'll be hearing from Lily Norris, probably better known to a lot of you as Lily Hunter, who will be speaking to us about dispute resolution and mediation. And again, that's a lunchtime session. We also have a senior leaders event, which is invite only uh, to fellows of the branch. Uh, and this is also a lunchtime event. Um, we'll be hearing from Carolyn Taylor um, of International SOS, um, who will speak to us about mental health before, during and after COVID. And I very cleverly haven't written down the date of that. I want to say off the top of my head, it's the 16th of March. It's round about then, um, but uh, all details are, are, are on the website and in the newsletter. All branch fellows um, should already have received an invite, uh, but if you haven't, or if you're a senior leader, um, sort, of, sort of like people uh, director level, uh, who'd like to be included, then please get in touch uh, via the branch email address, northscotland at uh, cipdbranch.co.uk. This weekend sees the launch of our 2022 branch survey, and we use that information to help shape future branch programmes. Uh, a link of, uh, to that can be found in our branch newsletter, which is coming out uh, this weekend. If you don't currently subscribe uh, to our branch newsletter, you can do this by going to the CIPD website and selecting branch updates. And, and I think it's, it's one of the communications options on there, but you have to tick uh, the branch newsletter to get that, um, as, as you do with all the other newsletters. And there are about 20, I think, that you can subscribe to if you want. Anyway, now that the admin's out the way, uh, let me introduce today's speaker, who is Andy Milne, who represents the Better Health Generation, and they're working in partnership with Able Futures to deliver the Access to Work Mental Health Support Service on behalf of the DWP, which is the Department of, for Work and Pensions. If you have any questions for Andy, please put them into the chat and we'll answer them uh, after Andy finishes speaking. So without further ado, Andy, I will pass over to you. Thank you, Judith. That's that's great. And good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for uh, for having me on the, the session today. Um, we've also got Michelle Collinson on the call as well, who's our national manager um, at the Better Health Generation. So as Judith mentioned, if there's any questions, please feel free to pop them in the chat um, and we will have plenty of time as well for, for discussion at the end of, um, of the presentation. So um, just once again, thank you very much for, for having us and hopefully for today, I'll be able to essentially explain a little bit more about our organisation, our partnership um, with Able Futures and the Department for Working Pensions, and hopefully how we're able to provide uh, your colleagues and employees with mental health support, which is all fully funded. Um, by the Department for Work and Pensions. So by formal way of um, introduction, I'm Andy Milne and I'm head of the Better Health Generation UK. Um, so just to give you a quick bit of background into who we are as an organisation at the Better Health Generation, uh, we're a team full of mental health nurses, general adult nurses, counsellors, occupational therapists, physios, nutritionists, psychologists, lifestyle coaches, etc. And we do work across a variety of different sectors. So we work within employability, we work within education, skills, justice, youth, um, sports, um, and also the corporate setting as well. So we deliver a lot of workshops, webinars, as well as sort of employee assistance programs um, to large organisations and small organisations. But for the purposes of today, um, as I mentioned, this is all fully funded um, access to work service offer. Um, which is all around focusing on helping to keep people in work and reduce sickness, reduce absenteeism, but ultimately improving individuals' mental health and well-being whilst they're at work and in their personal lives. So I guess just to give me a little bit of, of background as well, um, would you, anyone be able to just maybe give me a, a virtual thumbs up if possible, if you have maybe become aware of uh, the Access to Work Mental Health Support Service before this um, call or... The, the communication was sent out just so I can kind of gauge as to how many people may have heard of this before. 
So a lot of people may have heard of the physical disabilities around access to work, but maybe not so much around the mental health support service that is actually available alongside that as well. Okay. Thank you. So um, what I'll do then is really just spread the awareness around what service offer is, um, and then I'll explain how a, an individual can refer themselves, and then we'll open it to up any, any questions towards the end. So we all know that mental health can affect um, employee and apprentice performance, whether that be due to maybe anxiety, stress, depression, trauma, maybe bereavement, sleep challenges, maybe confidence, motivation. And then we throw in the impact of COVID-19 and how this has changed the way that we all work. It's naturally had an increase on the impact of people's mental health. And, and, and as we build towards the, the return to a work, workplace across Scotland, it's likely that this is going to trigger the need for further mental health support for your staff members. So from speaking to the delivery partners in, in England that deliver the access to work mental health support service across England and Wales, there has been a recent spike in referrals because of employees wanting further support now that they have returned to the office. And we want to try and help yourselves put the support in place to be able to um, prepare your staff and give your staff more options of support as the, the motion of returning to offices across Scotland um, becomes a little bit closer. Um, so we've had a lot of referrals recently around supporting employees with coping with change, maybe feelings of stress, feelings of overwhelm, anxiety, worry, um, for a whole host of different reasons. So um, it might be that, for example, that the recent power outages due to the storms have maybe triggered some stress, some anxiety. It might be the rising cost of fuel, energy, supermarket prices. It might be time management that is stressing an individual um, at work. It could be bereavement, loss, and we'll have a look at some of the areas that we're able to provide the support around. Um, but it has been designed as a, as a catch-all service, just because we know that one in four people will experience a mental health challenge each year. So I suppose if you think of your staff members, for every 40 staff members that you may have, or friends and family, at least 10 of those individuals may benefit from the support that we're able to offer through access to work mental health support service. So we deliver it across the whole of Scotland. So what we do is we work with Able Futures, who are the prime contractor with DWP, um, and we are the delivery partner across the whole of Scotland. So what we do is promote the services um, to organisations, small and large across um, the whole of Scotland. And then our clinicians are actually the ones that deliver um, the one-to-one -one sessions and support service. So. Um, England and Wales is also covered on access to work, um, but they are delivered by, via different partners. So we are the, the partner for Scotland. So DWP fund this service. Um, so unlike previous access to work mental health support services, there are no shared costs once a company reaches a certain size and referrals are, uh, are completely uncapped. So there's no costs for the employers, the employees or the apprentices to use and promote the services in, within their workplace. So. As an organisation, as yourselves, you won't um, sign up to any contracts or any service level agreements. You simply help promote this service to your colleagues, to your apprentices and across your organisation by sharing the information to let them know that this service is available if they so wish to choose to, to use it. Um, so currently we're working with a large number of local authorities. Um, so we're working with actually 26 out of the 32 local authorities across Scotland. We're working with universities, colleges, private banks, NHS, and private companies of all sizes from those in those companies, large corporates with tens of thousands of hundreds of thousands, even employees through to literally self-employed individuals. So we're trying to spread the awareness really throughout Scotland that this support is here. I think it's safe to say that um, it has been this sort of scheme and program has probably been DWP's best kept secret. So we are trying to change the awareness. Uh, it has been around since August 2018, um, but we've been working with Able Futures for the last sort of six or seven months now. Um, and we've been promoting this um, across Scotland with some good effect. So referrals have certainly ramped up um, because the awareness is getting spread now um, through large and small organisations. So we hope to be able to work with yourselves to um, promote the services to your staff so they have the, the, the option available to, to access the support. So as I alluded to, it has been designed as a catch-all service. So ultimately it is a self-referral process, but individuals can be signposted towards accessing the, the mental health support by maybe mental health first aiders, line managers, HR departments, um, wellbeing 
leads, for example. It can be built into staff inductions to let employees know that it's available. But really, we have all the marketing material and we would hope to be able to support you with posters, flyers, maybe presentations to your staff members to make them aware. Um, to try and sort of spread it across all of the different levels of organization. So as it is a catch-all service, the eligibility criteria is quite wide. So as long as an individual is over age 16, are in some sort of paid employment, so that can be self-employed, full-time, part-time, temporary, permanent, or an apprentice, these individuals are able to access the service. They can be attending work or they can be off sick. So we do work with some sort of strategic attendance management departments, for example, within local authorities really or large bad. organizations. Um, or it might be that actually an individual is attending work, but they may maybe just need some support. So it can be preventative, mild or moderate mental health challenges that we can support. Um, they don't have to have diagnosed mental health challenges or conditions either. So it's not like they have to have a, a full con uh, condition that's been diagnosed or challenged. It can be preventative, as I mentioned. So it might be more around you know, work-life balance, for example, all the way through to kind of your moderate challenges. I do have a slide just later in the presentation that talks through the customer journey, that the client journey. Um, but as I mentioned, it is a self-referral process. Um, so what will happen is an individual can access the, the referral form via the Able Futures website, um, or they can contact Able Futures on the phone number. The Able Futures contact team will then just run through a series of questions, um, more around just understanding what the mental health challenge is, just to make sure that they're eligible for the, uh, the service and our service would be the right fit for them make sure that they're employed. So just gathering things like their national insurance uh, number, for example, to, to match up. Um, and then they will then send that off to DWP for approval. Once that approval of funding has been um, confirmed by DWP, ourselves at the Better Health Generation as a service delivery partner, will contact the individual um, and have them booked in for their first initial appointment with one of our clinicians. So I will talk you through the, the full sort of client journey, um, but from the outset, it is a self-referral process and yourselves um, would be the catalyst for spreading the awareness to your staff members to let them know that this is available. So the aim of Access to Work is to be able to help individuals learn ways to be able to cope better with their mental health challenges and, and move forward with their personal lives and working lives. So it is all one-to-one -one support. So what we deliver is information, advice, guidance, support for the individual. So we build coping mechanisms and coping strategies around an individual's mental health and well-being at work. So the one-to-one -one support will be provided by our occupational therapists, mental health nurse or counsellors, and it is a fully confidential service. So um, it is an independent service as well, which is sometimes hey, help organisers yeah. being able to, um, sorry, I'm just getting a bit of bounce back. Um, with it being an independent service, um, it does, I suppose, give that confidence to an individual, maybe if there is an EAP service that you have already available to staff members. And um, because it is an independent service, sometimes the uptake on it, um, access to work has been higher. Um, what we can do is we can provide the, the main point of contact with headline information as to how many individuals have accessed the service each month. Um, but we can't go into further details around who has um, accessed it and what were their challenges. But we can give absolute high level sort of information so you can compare with uptake to uh, an EAP service or OCL, for example. Um, but having it as an independent service is, is certainly something that we would um, encourage you to kind of promote to your team. It is confidential. So the only way that we would um, contact line managers or HR departments about a specific individual is if that um, employee actually asked us to do so. So sometimes we might advocate for that individual. Maybe they may be more comfortable with ourselves as the clinicians speaking to their line manager or HR departments. Um, but ultimately, we would only do that if that individual employee would like us to, to do so. And it's all delivered remotely as well, which is one less barrier for individuals to access the support. So we'll run the sessions via telephone or Microsoft Teams, um, generally speaking, for the, the employee. But it's completely up to them which method they would prefer. I do need to just highlight that it is a classed as a non-clinical service. So it is different to what an EAP or a counselling service would be. So it's de definitely designed to complement these offerings. So I'm not saying that this would replace an EAP or, or counselling services, uh, for example, but what it can do is work as a standalone, absolutely. 
or it can work in conjunction um, with a counselling or EAP service. But what we do is we look to be able to build support mechanisms and scope coping strategies to build an individual's resilience and help them move forward with putting practical kind of guidance in place to help them cope with their mental health challenges. And we also work with them for nine months. So it's different to an EAP where it might be sort of six sessions, for example, that the organisation funds, um, because we work across a, a nine month period either running monthly calls or fortnightly calls with that individual. So it's not designed to be a crisis service and we're not allowed to deliver counselling as such, but we can provide that information, support, guidance and signposting um, to the individual. So although our counsellors, mental nurses and therapists can deliver counselling as such, we're not able to strip it back, for example, to sort of childhood trauma and go, go back into the, the layers of that. What we will do is give the here and now sort of advice, guidance and coping strategies to help the individual. So that is kind of the key differences really between the AP and counselling service and, and what we're able to provide. So as you'll see on, on this slide here, there's a wide range of topics that our clinicians can cover to be able to help the uh, a range of mental health challenges. So in terms of referrals at the moment, they are varied, um, but stress, anxiety, sleep, overwhelm, um, you know, and, and of course the impact of COVID-19 is generating um, quite a lot of referrals as such, whether that be the impact of returning to work, maybe for those individuals that are, have moved back into the office or ha are having to commute again or uh, delivering face-to-face, -face, whether it's the hybrid working or whether actually it's working from home and maybe the social isolation element that COVID-19 has brought. Um, but you'll see here dealing with stress, anxiety, anger management, managing emotions, coping with change, bereavement, developing a sleep routine, healthy eating and drinking, panic attacks, financial management. And then you'll also see there that we've got communication skills, time management, organization and planning. And, um, you know, I had this conversation with quite a lot of different organizations and they may say, well, communication skills and organization and planning is, is not a mental health challenge, but actually, we can come from the angle that if communication is, is a challenge for an individual and that is affecting their mental health and well-being at work, then we're able to provide the strategies and help and support around that. And the same with organisation and planning and time management, for example. So whatever may be affecting an individual at work, whether it be in their personal lives, if it's affecting their, their in-work life um, as such in their working life, then we're able to provide the, the coping mechanisms and strategies around that. So how the sessions work from a nine month point of view is they're all be one to one. Um, when we meet with the individual over teams or telephone for first, first point, our clinician will meet the individual and they will get to know that individual, build the rapport with the employee and they will create what we would call a support plan. So on that support plan, it will highlight for the, for the next six months what we're going to work on with that individual. So we'll really try and get a good understanding of where that individual is um, struggling, maybe where they need a little bit more help. Um, we will discuss some of the strategies from the outset that we'll look to implement and we'll set that out over the, the support plan for the next six months. Then we'll deliver the, the, the interventions either monthly for up to roughly about an hour or fortnightly calls of up to half an hour, whichever the employee prefers. So it's all tailored to that individual and it is really flexible. So it might be that an employee starts with monthly calls and then actually maybe they decide that they want more intense support. So they go to fortnightly calls, for example, or they may start with fortnightly calls and then taper to, to monthly calls. So it can fluctuate per month as well, just dependent maybe on what that individual's challenges are at that time. Once we get to the six month mark, we'll review that initial support plan. We'll assess the progress that has been made by that individual update the goals and then we'll identify any areas that we still need to work on so maybe what coping mechanisms have worked um, for example um, maybe what's worked for their anxiety but actually they've tried a couple of coping mechanisms and strategies but they haven't worked so actually we're then able to to tailor the next three months to be able to provide some more strategies um, to support that particular area once we get to the, the six month mark and we've reviewed the strategies, sometimes what we'll do is go into kind of a light touch period. So depending on the progress that that individual has made, the idea is that we'll get them to the six month mark and they'll have their own toolkit and they'll have all of the, the coping strategies in place to be able to take, take ownership really of their, their well-being. So what we try and do from month seven to month nine is try and hand control back to the, the participants to be able to empower them to 
continue to implement those strategies that they've learned. Um, so the, the fortnightly calls or monthly calls can continue. That's absolutely fine if that individual would like to do so. Or it might be that they actually prefer to pull back on the support. And it might be that we just check in with the individual over a wellbeing check call. It might be that we text them, email them. We have a digital hub of online hub of information as well that they're able to access a variety of different resources. And we also have a digital health solution um, called Your Health Plus, which is the Better Health Generation Zone app, which is all around providing activities, psychoeducation and support for people in work. So we will also give the individuals the, the app that they're able to engage with at any time. Um, so we can tailor it off um, and taper if that individual has all of the tool in their toolbox, or we can continue with the fortnightly or monthly calls. And again, it's all tailored to that individual as to, to what is best for them at that time. So here we have a, a summary of the whole service and the steps that uh, customer journey that um, the individual would take. So on the left hand side here, you'll see that they will call Able Futures or complete an expression of interest at ablefutures.co.uk. Um, the contact team at Able Futures will take them through the eligi eligibility criteria, ensure that they're eligible for the programme and the services that we're able to provide are, are the correct fit. At this point, 99.9% .9 of applications that get submitted to DWP will be approved for funding because what will happen is if an individual applies for the program, when they speak to the Able Futures contact team, for example, and if they said that they wanted counselling and counselling was what they were looking for, at that point, we would let them know that this wouldn't be the right service for them, for example, and we will help signpost them to other support, whether that be internally AP that they may be able to access for yourselves, if that organisation has that on offer, or whether it's other more local sort of areas of support um, and support organisations that we can signpost them to. So um, we just have to stress really at this point, when we speak with the individuals, we'll explain exactly what the service is, um, check their eligibility in terms of employment, and if so, we will submit that to DWP. So once the funding's been granted, we will contact them and then we will set up the first appointment, create the support plan with the individual. Normally the first call is around 45, 50 minutes, create the support plan, and then we will send that off to DWP um, just to ensure that the individual um, can start the process. And then we will have the, the, the fortnightly and monthly calls through to the six month mark, review the support plan, and then potentially go into the light touch period um, on continue for the full nine months of support. So in total, we've, we've helped across England, Scotland and Wales over 9,000 people and deal with a variety of different mental health challenges, anxiety, depression, stress, bereavement, financial worries, challenges, for example. Um, and just as importantly, we've worked with a really diverse range of employees and apprentices from hospitality, healthcare, education, at all levels of an organisation as well. So we'd love to be able to help you promote this you know, to your colleagues, to your apprentices, to your partner organisations, maybe even friends and family that are, are in work um, across Scotland. They will also be able to, to access this service. So. It, because it is completely independent, really, we just ask that organisations are able to spread the awareness as far as possible. And it is something where there is no catch, there is no cost, and it is just around spreading the awareness for people. So we, we have pre-made emails that we can forward over to yourselves for you to be able to distribute. We have marketing flyers, posters, intranet content, content that can go in newsletters, for example. So we try and make it as easy as possible for yourselves to launch. And we do also come in and deliver presentations over Teams, for example, maybe to your mental health first aiders or to your whole staff, jump onto team meetings, maybe service departments, whatever it may be that your organisation has, we're more than happy to have our partnership coordinators come on and deliver a presentation similar to this to let the employees and managers, line managers know that this service is available um, for for their staff and we do try and embed it within the organization as much as possible and that's where we've had some really good um success in referrals coming through and us being able to support the, um, the staff members because we want individuals to to know that it's available now but also it's going to be available in another six months time if that's something that they would want the support for so we do try and embed it as much as possible we have our partnership coordinators who will report for yourselves to the point of contact to let you know how many referrals have come through so you can um, compare that maybe to other services that, that you may have on offer um, but ideally you know we were there to support we want to be able to support individuals and we're just trying to spread as, as much awareness um, as possible um, so I'll just put the, the contact details here of um, the Able Futures free phone number that 
your employees are able to contact and then the able futures website is, is on there as well and i will pop it in the chat function too so what i wanted to do really is just leave plenty of time for, for some q a really so i can sort of address any um any comments any concerns any questions or if you want me to reiterate anything around the eligibility criteria please just let me know um but yeah i'll open it up to you guys for, for any questions and then um, if there's anyone that wants um, a one-to-one -one meeting like this, for example, to discuss how we can actually roll it out for your organisation, please do let me know. Please contact me on my email address and we can certainly set, set that up with either myself, Michelle, who's on the call, or one of our partnership team um, to come and set that up and, and help you with the launch of that. So I can see there's been some uh, comments in chat. I haven't had a chance to read them. Uh, Judith, I don't know if there's any questions yeah, that have come we've through. We've got a couple, Andy. Um, First one, well, thank you, first of all, for, for, for that. I mean, like I say, I think it's, you, you, you've said to me a few times, it's the best kept secret um, what, what's available. And I think you've opened all of our eyes um, in, in your presentation. It's a question from Angela. She's saying, uh, asking, is an assessment used to help determine where a person is struggling? So yeah, so what we would do is on the initial initial contact with that individual, what we would do with the clinician is that they will just try and understand really what the challenges are. So they're not going to take them through, for example, a full kind of biopsych social assessment where they'll look at all different areas, but they will have a, a, I guess, more of an informal assessment. So they'll ask the individual to, to just let us know, let that clinician know where are they struggling, and then they can then support that individual over the nine months and create that support plan. So it will fully be, be tailored. But yeah, it will be an informal assessment, I suppose, but not an assessment where there's a mountain of questions. It'll be a conversation driven um, to try and understand where we can help that individual. And then we will then lay out what we feel and what they agree and what they feel they would work on, uh, like to work on really on the, on the programme. So it's all kind of person centred the way it's delivered. Okay, great. Um, now, there's a question from Mandy, which Michelle has actually answered, but I'll, I'll just um, reiterate it just in case everybody hasn't seen the chat. Uh, Mandy's saying she's so glad to hear of this possi uh, possibly life-changing service. Can people self-refer or can HR managers refer? And Michelle has come back to say, to say that this is for self-referral. Um, and then Hannah's asking, um, is the process map available to download from the website? It's so useful for employees to see the steps, she thinks. Definitely, yeah. So what we can do is um, we can send that out. So we can send the presentation out, and also we have plenty of marketing flyers and materials and posters where the process map process map is in there as well. Um, so I don't know what might be the best way, Judith. Would it be to send it over to yourself to send over, or if yeah, you if you do that, email, we can send that out. Yeah, we yeah, can send that out great. to people who've signed up. Yep. Um, Oh, the, the, oh, the, the questions are coming thick and fast now, no, that's all right. um, which is great. It's uh, Mandy saying people may think this help is for people with more severe mental health issues. How do how do you overcome this? And do you work with community mental health teams? Yeah, so that's a good question. So I think that kind of goes along the lines of what I mentioned there around sort of the differences between a counselling service, potentially in the AP. So naturally i guess we will sort of um, work with individuals who might become in crisis whilst they've worked with us so they may sign up to the, the program self-refer and actually be kind of a maybe a mild moderate challenge which then actually spirals into more of a, um, a high level kind of complex um, challenge that they have in that case yeah we would absolutely signpost to community mental health teams doctors gps etc to be able to help them unlock the, unlock the therapies and the support so a lot of the work that we will do is um, try and get the individual really so if we're working with them for the full nine months but we can't put in all the coping strategies that are needed and maybe it is a counseling service that's needed or a more intensive support what we will do is try and help that individual navigate the system and try and find a way to work with community mental health teams etc so our support we wouldn't be able to deliver that support directly but what we can do is provide that handover that warmer handover and navigate the systems essentially to be able to get them to unlock um the other support services so we couldn't deliver it ourselves on this just because of the parameters of the contracts but signposting is a big part of it to make sure that the individuals do unlock that and i suppose same with local support groups for example it might be that an individual's made really really great process uh, progress over the nine months of us actually they're a, a mild kind of challenge but actually there might be longevity in there for us to be able to signpost them and, and connect them to other support groups 
Um, once they've finished the nine months, so they've actually got a continuation of support there in place once our one-to-one -one support finishes. So it's all really about setting that individual up for success in the long term once they've finished the nine months with us. So we, we were not supposed to obviously take crisis calls, but if an individual we're, we're working with is in crisis, clearly we're going to be able to support that individual. But the way that we would kind of promote it, or hopefully you can promote it to your, your employees and apprentices, is that it's mild, moderate kind of preventative strategies and, and clients that we're kind of looking for um, for this service. But clearly, if that does escalate, then we will provide the support for them, of course. Okay, thanks. Angela's asking, um, what does it, it look like for the service to contact um, an employer regarding employee mental health difficulties related to the job? Is this confidential or is the employee named? And do employers typically follow recommendations? Yeah, so it is fully confidential. So the only way that we would reach out to an employer is if that individual employee asked us to do so. So there would be no way that an employer would actually know that we're working with that individual unless the employee employee has asked us to, to do so. So sometimes if the employee does like want us to advocate for them or maybe come, come into one of the meetings with a manager or employer, then we can do so. Um, so we might discuss things such as sort of wellness action plans. We might discuss, um, you know, stress risk assessments, for example. There might be a variety of different areas where we can kind of broker that conversation with employer and employee. Um, but that will be down to the individual employee because um, we will never contact the employer unless we're asked to do so by that individual as such. Okay. Um, a, a lot of people commenting on, on how good it is to hear about this and the fact that they didn't know about it um, and, and the fact that it's a much needed service. Uh, Laura's saying, are employers able to get regular feedback reports see how employees are progressing if employees are in agreement? And it's just put in brackets here just to cover any data protection issues. Yeah, so again, it would just be down to that employee. If they wanted us to do so, we, we can absolutely sort of set up a call or provide an email, you know, with, with high level kind of information. We're not going to be able to go into the kind of the what or the whole whys and the wherefores, but we could absolutely give high level information. But again, that's just down to the, the individual employee, really, if they would like us to do so. But yeah, we can. Um, but again, it just all sits with the employee. And I think that's probably the benefit as, as when I kept on alluding to that, the independent part that sometimes, and wrongly so, employees may associate an EAP with the organisation because they're procuring the services and buying for the services or internal occupational health, for example. Because this is fully independent, um, it does encourage a lot of employees to access the service as well because of that reason. Um, but absolutely, if it, it all really, the power sits for the employee really is what I'm, what I'm kind of sort of trying to say and stress. But um, yeah, we, we will speak to um, line managers. Sometimes being able to advocate for the individuals is a really powerful tool that, that we can do. Yeah. Uh, and, and this maybe kind of runs into that. Um, it's from Vicky saying she's great. To, it's great to hear about the service, certainly a much needed service at the moment. And she wish she knew about it sooner. Can family members do the referral on behalf of the employee if they're finding it difficult? So they, they can help them through the process, but Able Futures would need to speak to that individual so they can be alongside them. Absolutely. Um, they could fill out the expression of interest, for example, with them um, and be there when Able Futures call them to discuss it. So they could, again, I suppose, advocate for them. But the individual who is getting signed up would absolutely have to give their consent and be there, really. Um, so it is a self-referral process, but if they want to be there alongside them, um, as long as the employee is happy with that, that would be fine. But yeah, friends and family are able to, anyone across Scotland is able to access this service. Friends, family, colleagues, apprentices, a lot, as long as they're in some sort of work. Okay, excellent. Um, and Mandy's asking, um, do you know if DWP work coaches and staff promote this enough to claimants who may be looking for work and have health issues or be in low paid work? Yeah, so I've delivered sort of numerous um, sessions such as this to DWP staff, um, both for themselves to be able to access it as well, um, but also their their colleagues that, um, so they're, they're maybe service users that have moved into work just recently, or we work with the, the DEAs as well. So um, they should be aware of it. Um, 
DWP is such a, a large organization, there might be pockets where they don't. Um, so if you do have any links that you would like us to discuss that with them, you know, we're, we're more than happy to, um, to, to coordinate and connect with them. But yeah, we have delivered um, to all kind of the service, service area leads and the DAs across Scotland, um, but there'll naturally be some maybe that, that aren't aware of it, even, even though I suppose it is DWP service. So anything we can do to be able to help connect, we would we would absolutely do so. But yeah, they should be aware of it, but maybe it's not utilised as much as it it could be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that that's it on, on, on the questions that have come through in the chat, Andy. Um, I mean, I think just, just reading the 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 chat i think it's one of these things like you say it's the best case kept secret out there um and and i guess if we can do our bit and and flag it up as a as a resource to say to people have you heard of this yeah. um because i suspect loads of people haven't um and you, you know sort of start the ball rolling that way even um but I mean, I, I don't know if anybody else has. I mean, if you want to unmute yourself and ask a question directly, then feel free to do that. Um, or, but I mean, other than that, Andy, thank you so much for your time. Um, it's 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 been an absolute eye opener. Not just for I mean, it was an eye opener for me when I spoke to you the first time. Um, and I think you know, seeing what's available, um, and and you know, it's it's, it's so seldom you get something now that um, is fully funded. You know, I think, it, well, yeah. and, and you're, you're speaking to Scotland, so obviously, you know, not, not stereotypes, but I mean, in terms of the fact that it's fully funded um, and it's just getting the message out to people that it's there, you know, um, and it's available and, and, and to make use of it if they're in the unfortunate circumstances that they need it. Um, but let's, listen, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Um, thanks to everybody who took part and some some really good questions and I think it really has um, I, I mean that's only been what sort of 40 minutes something like that but in that 40 minutes you've raised everybody's awareness to a level that it just wasn't there before um, so I think that's definitely been worthwhile. Thank you yeah and thank you for, for inviting me in and I just yeah I hope we can we can provide that support and I do promise there is no catch there's no cost there's no invoices that's coming anyone's way I, I do promise you it's uh, we get a lot of people saying it's you know what is the catch but I promise uh -huh. that there isn't it's there to support and it's all fully funded by DWP yeah. to essentially keep people in work and reduce you know um, those people going on uh, losing jobs um, or obviously sickness and, and, and absenteeism so yeah if anyone's got any questions please feel free to contact me directly if you'd like the marketing material as well just drop me an email um, and I'll also send the marketing material to yourself Judith hopefully yeah Send that, out. that would be great but yeah more and we can send that out and the recording will be available um somebody smarter than me does <laughs> trans, um well, what's the word i can't even think of the word downloads it and then uploads it onto youtube but that's way beyond my technical capabilities and um, <laughs> so that'll be available in a, in a few days time um and, and that's got all your contact details on it as, as well but i'm sure people will, will have scribbled down your email and your phone number and things like that so let us see andy thanks again for your time mm -hmm. Um, and, and thanks to everybody for giving up some of their lunch lunch break to take part. I hope to see you all soon. Thank you very much. Thanks. Take care. Thank you. Bye, Bye now. Bye. Bye.